We are honored to have Dr. Mabin Syed with us, who has graciously agreed to chair this conference. Dr. Bean, as he is known amongst his large fan base, trained as a doctor and after practicing clinical medicine for a few years, he continued his studies in computer science with the goal of merging innovative technologies and healthcare. Dr. Bean's dedication for teaching began at Horizon, Horizon Medical Institute. His dedication to innovative and pioneering medical education has been the mainstay of his life. At Dr. Bean Corp, he strives to create a managed marketplace for medical providers that enables them to learn medicine in conjunction with new technologies. And his YouTube channel has over 280,000 subscribers. Over the past year, Dr. Bean has worked hard to analyze and share the most up-to-date evidence on ivermectin through more than 50 YouTube tutorials and interviews with experts. Without further ado, I will pass the baton to Dr. Bean, who will start the proceedings with a presentation on the mechanism of action of ivermectin for COVID. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna share my screen and start with the ivermectin's mechanism of actions. So first of all, so the agenda for me today, I wanna to discuss some of the possible mechanism of actions of ivermectin in context of, iver, uh, in context of COVID. So some of these are in silico studies, some of these are in vitro studies, and the most important thing is that as doctors have been practicing and using ivermectin, majority of these potential uh, mechanisms, you would see that these are playing and clinically we can observe the outcomes. So today we'll talk about that ivermectin docks with the SARS-CoV-2 spike proteins. Ivermectin docks with the ACE2 receptor as well. Ivermectin, so all of these are the potential mechanisms. Ivermectin disrupts the function of the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase or viral RDRP. Ivermectin disrupts the function of three chymotrypsin-like protease or 3CL pro or M pro as we call it. And we'll discuss that too, today as well. Ivermectin disrupts the important alpha and beta usage by the SARS-CoV-2 cargo. We will discuss that today as well. And finally, ivermectin modulates inflammatory system by a nuclear factor kappa chain in, for the beta B cells. So let's start our discussion. So here, if you see, uh, I hope that you can uh, see this uh, screen. Let me just very quickly make sure. Cool. So first mechanism. So imagine that this is our cell here. And in this cell, we have SARS-CoV-2 that has arrived. So we know that the SARS-CoV-2 arrives in the cell either by phagocytosis or pinocytosis or by binding with the ACE2 and fusing with the cell membrane. So both of those processes are possible. Eventual outcome is that the virus has been released or broken pieces of it have been released in the cytoplasm. And then as the virus is making its cargo and virus is having its proteins being transformed and created through our ribosomes, what happens is one part of that is the, so let's say this is a ribosome and it has used the viral messenger RNA and produced viral proteins. These viral proteins, some of them, which we call viral cargo, and the reference for this one is the Kelly's discussion here. So the FDA approved drug ivermectin inhibits the replications of SARS-CoV-2 in vitro. Here is the mechanism that I'm discussing. So what happens is this cargo of the virus, it connects with our proteins called important alpha and beta. And then it goes through these important alpha and beta with the virus cargo they go through the nuclear pore complex, they enter the nucleus, and then inside the nucleus, the message from the virus asks the nucleus not, or our DNA, not to express the genes that would enhance the cell survival and that would allow the cell to release interferons. We know that the cells, when they are sick with viruses or bacteria or cancers, 
they tend to release interferons to alert the neighboring cells to shore up their own defenses. And this is what SARS-CoV-2 tries to suppress. Ivermectin disrupts this process by binding. So if we see here in the next diagram, here, if you see this little block of black, let's call that ivermectin. Ivermectin can bind with the important alpha and beta and disrupts their process. And hence the virus cannot send its cargo to our nucleus and the nuclear defenses that are suppressed are not suppressed. The result is that the nucleus can continue to have the gene expression to make interferons that would allow the nearby cells to receive the interferon messages and start showing up their own uh, defenses as well. And that is one potential mechanism by which ivermectin keeps our cells stronger and prevents the cells to be unnecessarily damaged by SARS-CoV-2. Second mechanism. So this is an in silico study. All of those studies, the references are there. So here is the second mechanism. Ivermectin docks to the SARS-CoV-2 spike receptor binding domain attached to AS2. And this plus this uh, one, identification of three chymotrypsin. So here, if you see, this is a SARS-CoV-2 virus. This is our cell. On the cell, this is the AS2 enzyme or AS2 receptor that is working with um, ivermectin. It acts as a receptor for ivermectin. And if you see here, this is the spike protein of the ivermectin. Spike protein, as we know, has S1 domain, S2 domain. And with the S1 domain, we have receptor binding domain. So part of the spike protein S1 is the receptor binding domain. That receptor binding domain is responsible to bind with AS2. The S2 domain has fusion protein with it, which binds with the cell membrane after priming with TMPRSS2. So the end result is that this binding leads to the, the fusion of ivermectin with our cell and entry of the RNA into the cytoplasm. If you see here, this red block is ivermectin. Ivermectin in silico studies have shown to be connecting to the RBD of the spike protein plus the ACE2 enzyme. So it almost, it almost becomes a hindrance for the virus to be able to successfully bind and enter the cell. So that is a very important mechanism, potential mechanism that disrupts the ivermectin uh, SARS-CoV-2's function. Continuing on, mechanism number three. So three chymotrypsin-like proteases. So what happens is if you focus here for a second, when the virus is in the cytoplasm, it releases its messenger RNA or its positive sense RNA. That RNA is picked up by the ribosome. Ribosome would then translate that into a big protein called polyprotein. All of you are doctors here, healthcare professionals here, you know that this is a normal behavior of the viruses and their reproduction. So once that polyprotein is made, that is like all of the enzymes of the viruses are stuck in one cutout paper. Then what happens is through autoproteolytic mechanism, meaning some enzymes break off of this loose polyprotein by themselves, that is called the autoproteolysis, and then they further help break down this polyprotein into individual enzymes, which will then help for the virus to do its function and make its copies. So one of the protein that breaks off in the beginning is the three chymotrypsin like protease, or we call it MPRO, or we call it 3CL pro as well. This protein is a protease as the name says, which will then work on this polyprotein and liberate the remaining enzymes for the virus, which will then start replicating the virus. So you can actually imagine that if we suppress this enzyme, then the remaining virus work or virus production will become stalled. So ivermectin binds to this enzyme as well and disrupts it. So this is another potential mechanism by which ivermectin would disrupt the possible replication of the virus in our cells. Next mechanism, 
is the RNA dependent RNA polymerase disruption. So if I go here, this would be the here. So if you see this study, it is a preprint ivermectin as a promising RNA dependent RNA polymerase inhibitor. So what happens is again, this is an in silico study. If you continue to follow this mechanism, once these polyproteins have come in and once they have started opening up into smaller enzymes, those smaller enzymes, one of them is the RDRP. This enzyme will help further make the genetic copies of the viral RNA. So imagine that we have the virus and we are going to build new viruses. And then in each virus, we have to put a brain or the messenger RNA of the virus. So RDRP would start helping us turning the positive sense messenger RNA into a negative sense and then from negative back to positive plus sub RNA or partial RNAs are also created which would do various functions inside the cell by creating enzymes. This RDRP enzyme is a backbone for the viral replication and ivermectin is potentially in silico studies show that it binds with the RDRP as well and possibly disrupt it too. So that is another very interesting and beautiful mechanism. Continuing, final important mechanism is the ivermectin disrupting nuclear factor kappa light chain B for B cell factor. This factor is actually, so from the B cell, don't be um, alarmed that this only happens in the B cell. This actually NFK beta pathway, KB part, pathway is present in all cells. So here what happens is imagine this part, this, these two little proteins here, if I can make it a little bigger, these two proteins are the NFKB. They are usually present in the cytoplasm of a cell and are kept inactivated by IKBA. Now, when some signal arrives at the cell or some stress occurs or some reactive oxygen species are produced or cell uh, is under attack by a virus, then what happens is this uh, protein complex is activated and the activation causes the IK beta to be separated and the NFK beta to be separated. This NFKB then goes into the nucleus and from there various gene expressions occur and various cell responses occur. For us, what is important is inflammatory responses. Ivermectin can actually dock with the NFKB as well and disrupt its function. So this study is actually done for the uh, for the LPS from the bacteria. However, it shows that in the presence of ivermectin, inflammatory system is modulated as well. So these are four or five mechanisms that are uh, used to by the ivermectin to disrupt specifically SARS-CoV-2 like enzyme uh, viruses, modulate the inflammatory system and potentially all viruses that have RDRP or three chymotrypsin-like enzymes. So with this, thank you very much for listening to the discussion. Let us now move to our, first, if you have any questions, we'll answer them and then we'll move to our next panelist, Dr. Laurie. Thanks very much, Dr. Bean. Um, well, from what you've described, it's clear that ivermectin is a potent antiviral, not just an antiparasitic agent with all those different mechanisms of action. Um, my question is, and this was also sent to us by email, is um, what, how, what would be the mechanism of action in long COVID if there is one? Very, very good. I'm going to share my screen again. And this is a very, very important question has been brought up many times. So just in uh, a quick summary of the long COVID, long COVID could be for many reasons. And of course, there is a lot of research happening right now as the more data evolves, we will keep our folks here up to date as well. One possibility of long COVID is the SARS-CoV-2 SARS itself hiding somewhere in our tissues. For example, there is a study that shows that SARS-CoV-2 can continue to sit in the gut uh, epithelial cells for a longer period of time. 
So it is possible that the virus finds some place to hide. There is another discussion, uh, another research done by Dr. Bruce Patterson and his group who are researching on uh, long COVID and they feel that monocytes have res uh, remnants of the SARS-CoV-2 present in them and they are replicating with the monocytes. So there is one possibility that SARS-CoV-2 is present. Another possibility is that something that is called hit and run by viruses and hit and run is where a viral infection occurs and our immune system gets dysregulated. There may be many other possibility, for example, ma ma mast cell activation syndrome or macrophage activation syndrome and so on. So there are more mechanisms there to be seen. Now, if a person has long COVID and the reason is that there is some possibility of the SARS-CoV-2 hiding somewhere, one, or there is some possibility that some inflammatory dysregulation has occurred, which of course, from the symptoms, you can tell that there is some inflammatory dysregulation that is going on. For both of them, ivermectin can actually help. As we just saw from its mechanism that it helps to disrupt the viral, virus's own replication, Plus it helps modulate the inflammatory system as well. So in the long COVID, the way to work with ivermectin is to, in, to administer the ivermectin and see if that is making sense. And if that is improving the patient, that means there may have been some remnants of uh, SARS-CoV-2 that are being eliminated now, or it is also possible that there is some inflammatory uh, modulation. The way to now see that if that modulation is working or not, if you stop ivermectin and if things come back, that means either give ivermectin more or there may be other mechanisms that are going on as well. So I hope that answers that question, um, Dr. Laurie. Thank you very much.